Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here, and for the first time in forever, for the first time in forever, it's uh, not too cloudy. There are actually high altitude uh, clouds, uh, but uh, yeah, we're still going to attempt something because uh, because why not? So I have my uh, dual setup there, side by side, just like I showed in another video. What the wind? Come on, there was no wind until right now. I think the wind just listened to me and decided like, hey, let's uh, <laughs> let's make this equipment just move around so you cannot guide properly or get any pictures. <laughs> oh, well, uh, but let's let's try anyway. So um, I'm going to try to image somewhere close to the uh, North America nebula, I think. So the Cygnus wall. And so what I'm going to do is uh, going to have uh, this big uh, imaging rig as the main telescope, my camera is the secondary telescope, just like I described in my uh, synchronized dithering and side-by-side uh, -side videos, which should be appearing somewhere uh, around here on the, uh, above. And uh, let me first, you know, I'm going to connect to my equipment. So I'm going to connect to the ASI 1600. Um, gain 200 will be good because I'm going to do narrowband. And minus 10 degrees might be a bit, a bit aggressive, but we live dangerously. So I'm going to see if, uh, if that works. I'm going to connect to the filter wheel. Uh, this particular one will also connect to the focuser and to the telescope to start with. And uh, this is one side of Nina that is connected. I have a second instance of Nina that will be uh, doing the second uh, imaging rig where I have my little uh, Canon lens, 50 millimeters f1.4, and my ASI 533MC Pro, along with my ZWO uh, dual band filter, which it will be the first light for it. I have never actually used it. Uh, I'll be maybe less aggressive with this uh, 533MC Pro because I think it's uh, cooling less efficiently than the 1600mm. Uh, and uh, gain and offset seem to be good, so I am good on that front. I'm also going to connect uh, the focuser and we're going to make sure that I have it at f2.0 that lens because that's where I determined that the star shapes start to be uh, decent and I think that's pretty much it that I will connect on that one for the moment. So right now they're both uh, cooling and what I'll do is I'll go to the main instance, the one that will control the whole imaging uh, run and we're going to go into the sky atlas or maybe the framing uh, place. I'm going to select something like Cygnus. Do you have anything with Cygnus? Egg Nebula, maybe Pelican. Pelican Nebula should be in there. Okay, so we're going to do Pelican Nebula there, but I am going to take an area of maybe uh, five degrees. <laughs> That's a lot. It's going to let, take a long time to load, but I want to actually see you know, what's in that area just to choose a target that seems interesting in that area, because why not? And by the way, the equipment, the uh, Milky Way is probably behind my house wall here. I wish I could just like build a big column with a dome on top, but unfortunately I don't think that's possible. Uh, although that would be quite awesome. Um, so I'm not going to probably be able to image uh, actually imaged until it's like 11 p.m. Ah, but you know it doesn't uh, doesn't hurt to uh, to get ready or, um, already. So we are doing several things. We're cooling the cameras. We're uh, searching for a target um, because I I don't even know what I'm going to image. I just know that I want to image an area that's more or less in the uh, uh, area of Cygnus towards the 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 star at the center of the Cygnus kind of cross. Uh, the Sadr, 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 uh, star, and you know we'll see uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'll wait until uh, the NASA Sky Survey image is loaded, and then we'll choose a target together. And here we have the image loaded, but actually it's only showing uh, Deneb. I think it's not showing the star that I'm interested in. So I just noticed uh, using Sky Safari that there is another target, Messier 29, that is very close. Uh, so I'm going to uh, insert, instead of the Pelican Nebula, I'm going to uh, center on Messier 29. Hopefully that's the correct one. Oh, come on, why, why? Sky Safari sometimes reverts back to the, uh, um, how do you call that? The, uh, the direction, like where your phone is pointing without letting me know. Um, if you have tips on how to avoid that, please let me know because it can get super annoying for me. So now I'm going to again uh, load an image for five degrees again around that area and I'll see you uh, back then. So 
yeah, I, I was a bit too um, cavalier about uh, choosing my target. I thought like, yeah, five degrees around the Pelican Nebula, this is good enough. Uh, and uh, it's, I think the NASA Sky Survey images are actually limited to a shorter field of view. I don't think that's five degrees. Uh, maybe it is, maybe I'm wrong, I don't really care that much. Uh, but now I'm going to look around a target that I know uh, is really much closer to where I actually want to image. And I want to image something, you know, that is not frequently imaged. Uh, because why not? You know, uh, the challenge, the fun, trying to do something different. And uh, also one of the uh, Nina developers uh, did that recently. Uh, had a blast doing it and uh, you know, I have no originality. I'm just a follower. I follow what other people do. And so I'm doing the same thing because why not? Okay, so let's wait until this uh, image is loaded. Aha, the image is loaded. There we are. So of course there's the Crescent Nebula, but that's too classic. Um, hmm, where, where does it look good? I kind of like this like fake Cygnus wall there. So I could have like, yeah, that doesn't look like a bad area to image just there. I don't know what this is. There, there's a little circle there. So there's definitely something happening there. Uh, another one could be this, but I like, I like this. This is nice. Let's do this. I have no idea what this object is. There is a name to it apparently. Uh, but let's, yeah, I like this, uh, this little framing there. I love this framing tool in Nina, but that's, uh, uh, that's something else. Uh, okay, and I am going to say that I want to replace this as the sequence target. And there we are. So let me see if I can also uh, slew to that already uh, to see like how far am I from actually being able to image that. Ooh, I am very far from being able to image that. It's going to be at least a couple of hours. Like this is pointing directly into the wall. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to start imaging in like one and a half hours maybe. Uh, so to do that, I'll just like set the imaging sequence uh, for that. So while I'm at it, uh, let's look at the camera. The camera cooled well here and the power is only at like 56%. That's quite amazing. Uh, let's have a look at my uh, other camera and it's at 63% at minus five. You know what? I'll try to put it to minus 10 then. Oops, minus 10. Cool. And, uh, and maybe it's, uh, it's going to work. So in the meanwhile, I'll open up uh, PhD2, which I have recently uh, recalibrated for this side-by-side -side setup. So it should be uh, working well. I'm just going to make sure that I am uh, connected to the uh, proper camera as usual, uh, to the mount as well. There we are. And it's going to take exposures. It's going to see my beautiful white wall. So it's probably going to be very white exposures for now. Absolutely it is, but that's fine. That way it's, it's going to be ready. And we're going to do exactly what I did in the synchronized dithering video, which is I'm going to go into the, the guider and make sure I have synchronized PhD2 connect to that from the main imaging rig. And then I'm going to connect to that from the secondary imaging rig. Um, which is still trying to get to minus 10 degrees. It might have trouble. It's already at 74%. So I might bring it back to minus five if it has trouble. Uh, anyway, let's go to guider, synchronize PhD2. And now I will want to uh, basically start setting up the actual sequence. So uh, within this, uh, the main instance of Nina, I'll go inside sequence and I will say this, this is the instance that will control the mount, control the plate solving, control everything. So um, this is what I am going to use across everything. So we will want to start guiding, we will want to slew to target, we will, we will want to standard target, we will want to autofocus on start. And I'm going to concentrate only on H alpha for today because that's going to give me the most punchy result and we'll see how it looks like. Um, and we're going to want to autofocus on start. Autofocus, I'll, uh, I'll put after every like 60 minutes and autofocus uh, after an HFR increase of uh, let's say 20%. And uh, we're going to take exposures. And I think since I, I'm at F3.8, that 300 second exposures will be good. Uh, I've been too lazy to actually point to an area of the sky that's already available. So 
I'm not going to use the, the optimal exposure calculator, but I calculated for one of my H alpha pictures in one of my other videos, which I'm pointing, pointing to here, that my optimal exposure time at F7 had been like 360 uh, seconds. So I'd be, I'll, I'm sure I'll be more than fine at 300 seconds. And then if I start imaging at, let's say, 11 p.m., uh, maybe a bit, uh, a bit later, yeah, 11.30 p.m., so in almost uh, two hours, uh, I'll have, yeah, ar around three hours of more or less darkness uh, to, uh, to take frames uh, from. So three hours, okay, uh, how many five minutes frames is that? How many times are there five minutes in one hour? Oh, my brain is so completely broken. Twelve? Yeah, 12, that sounds about right. Uh, 12 times, uh, t 12 times uh, three is 36, right? So I'll take 36 frames. Hopefully that's, uh, that's actually going to work. 36 fr frames of 300 seconds long each. And we have all of the parameters that are set. And let's say that I want to start this in, uh, well, a bit less than two hours. So I am going to say, uh, 6,600 sec uh, seconds, something like that there. We're gonna say we're gonna start it in uh, 6,600 se seconds. And then I'm going to do something similar in uh, the other one. I'll make sure that, I mean, the mount is not connected, so we're fine, but I'll make sure that under imaging, I don't have like anything like the med meridian flip or the, f the sequence end parameters are not uh, set. And uh, the autofocus step size and the autofocus exposure time, I've already checked them for my lens, are good enough as far as I, uh, I set them. I have, so I have my autofocus, uh, including the overshoot uh, method that is properly set up there. I might, uh, yeah, I'll keep it to four offset steps. So we should be good. And uh, let's go to uh, the sequence. My dither, every frame, I cannot change the number of frames. This is because I'm connected to the synchronized uh, PHD2, uh, where you cannot choose like every uh, n frames. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I, uh, my exposure time will be 30 seconds, which I think will be fine as well. We'll see. Maybe it will be overexposed. I don't care that much. We'll see how it goes. This is just a test. There are high altitude clouds, so I know I'm not going to get something exceptional. And I'm seeing that as kind of a test for my side-by-side -side rig, for the synchronized dithering, for my new lens, for my new filter, for everything put together. There's a lot of new things uh, going on there. And I haven't even taken my flats yet. Huh, so much work. I'm, I'm not feeling lazy there. Whew. <laughs> anyway, um, we were saying uh, 30 seconds. That's exactly 10 times less than the single sub exposure time of the other rig. And so that means I need uh, 360 uh, exposures um, to get me uh, there. With this, we should be ready. I'm also going to put a delay start of 606 and 10 seconds because you'll see why in a moment. And autofocus on start, autofocus uh, after an elapsed time of 60 minutes and autofocus after an HFR increase of 20%. I am also going to go into the imaging tab and click on the star there and I'll do that for uh, both um, uh, instances of Nina. I'm going to double check that the camera is at the right temperature in both instances of Nina. So we're at minus 10 here, fine. And the second instance Uh, yeah, it's struggling a bit more, but we're around minus 10. Oh, I wouldn't do that normally, but this is a test. This, uh, let's, uh, let's have some fun, shall we? And, uh, okay, uh, sequence. And uh, there's a delay. Uh, we, do not, we do start guiding on this one. Yes, I think so. Do we start guiding on the secondary mount? Yeah, we'll say yes. Yes to start guiding. I'm also going to make sure that the, in the autofocus um, settings, AF disab disable guiding is off. We want to make sure that the secondary imaging train never stops uh, the guiding for any reason. And uh, in this one, we'll double check that we have the, the same thing. Uh, and whew, la, 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 I'm, uh, I'm forgetting some stuff there. So the default focus exposure time, I'll put it to 10 seconds. And it will be overridden by this, uh, this filter there. 
but what well, there's tons of stuff that I'm forgetting, by the way. I should set the filter here to H alpha. Good. And the other one does not have a filter. Hopefully, this is going to be OK. Uh, I'm going to start uh, the sequence on this one. Uh, but also, first, I am going to copy the target name so that all of the images that this takes uh, end up in the same uh, overall folder uh, for both uh, instances of Nina. So I'm going to set my target name. I don't set the coordinates because the secondary um, instance of Nina is not connected to the mount at all. Hopefully, this will work. We'll see if it doesn't work. Never mind. We're, we're still going to be fine, I'm sure. And I am going to hit uh, start sequence here. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Start sequence there. Yeah. It should have been the reverse. <laughs> oh my, I, am, I, I think I'm tired today. Uh, it's been a long day at work. And uh, yeah, so I'm making a few mistakes here and there. Uh, never mind me. But basically, Nina is now waiting on both instances in roughly uh, one hour and 50 minutes, something like that. It will start the imaging run. It will sleuth to the target. It will plate solve. Yeah. And, uh, and it will uh, start imaging for hopefully around three hours. And we'll see what the uh, result actually is. Um, yeah, so I think that's... Uh, pretty uh, pretty much it. I'll put, of course, before I end this video, I'll put like a time lapse of uh, of my mount uh, throughout the night because that's always so much fun. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah. So see you uh, in the morning, hopefully. Otherwise, if I don't see you anymore, uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. The imaging session was okay, I guess. So it was kind of a success. Um, I'll be showing the results of both the uh, OSC and the narrowband as I'm speaking right now. Uh, the, it's the first time that I actually leave uh, Nina running without the sequence having even started. So I didn't check anything. Uh, plus, it's right after I've uh, changed my setup in a pretty major way. Uh, so that was a lot of risks going on with that. And the risks don't, didn't quite pay off. Uh, so it's probably not visible too much on the narrowband picture. The narrowband picture from far away looks quite good. And I'm actually very happy with it. It's, uh, it's a neat looking area uh, that we imaged here. Uh, but the star shapes are horrendous. And you know me, I'm lazy. I don't really care about star shapes. And, and that's why I'm actually kind of satisfied with that image. Uh, but the star shapes are really, really bad. They're like little triangles. And I think we had like, there's a lot of wind right now. And so I'm wondering what whether there was a lot of wind overnight, it's quite possible. Um, maybe we had poor guiding, maybe we had poor autofocus. And actually I saw that uh, in the middle of the night there was an autofocus run that fixed everything, fixed the focus. The, the HFR went from four to three uh, when I looked at the graphs on Nina. So I know that something went wrong with my autofocus. I'm suspecting that uh, my autofocus um, settings for my H alpha filter, which is three nanometers, were, uh, did not have enough exposure time, especially when the target is still fairly low in the sky, relatively speaking. Uh, so it might still be affected by, by smog. But the good thing is we have logs. I have my PhD2 logs. I have um, the logs from my focusing. Uh, and so we'll be able to look at that and see what went, went wrong together. So this will be the topic of another video. Um, make sure to subscribe, by the way, to me and click on the notification bell to make sure you don't miss that video. Uh, because I don't see that done often, but we're going to look at what went wrong overnight. So be examining the source of my failures and what are my steps to see, you know, what went wrong and what can I do so that it doesn't go wrong next time. But still, overall, for an, a hands-off session where Nina did everything and I did not even check whether it had started doing anything correctly, I'm really satisfied. This is like, it's almost magical how 
Nina together with my equipment did everything alone and I had I did not check anything I was in bed so there you have it I think that's pretty cool uh, so thank you so much for watching I hope this was uh, instructive uh, and helpful uh, thanks for joining me on that ride in my uh, light polluted uh, roof balcony um, and you know uh, if you like this video please click like please, please also leave a comment down below if you have suggestions or you know what went wrong and uh, you know also please don't forget to subscribe uh, click that notification bell so you know when there's a new video coming up and don't forget to look up at the stars whenever you can and I'll see you next time <laughs>